This is a standard geometric shape, so I made this pattern, which I'll scribe around and then cut out for the blanks for the ornaments. Cutting out these blanks with a pair of straight cut aviation snips. These pieces end up being about an inch and a half wide by four inches in length. Now that I have the blanks cut out, I'll use this spring-loaded center punch to mark where I want to put the hole. Drilling the hole with a 1 16th inch drill bit. Clipping off each end with the aviation snips. And then rounding off both ends, in this case with the tube sander, if I didn't have a tube sander, I would just use a file. Using the wire brush on the motor, removing any sharp edges that are left over from the aviation snips. And also by bearing down on the wire brush, because this metal is fairly soft, can bevel the edges so that it appears that this metal is heavier than it actually is. Looking at this blank closely, I can see that there's some oxidization. By bearing down on the wire brush, I can remove that oxidization. Placing this small anvil on several layers of sweatshirt, using a small ball peen hammer, and peening the surface. One of the things that I try to achieve, in this case in the ornaments, but also in other pieces, is light reflection. The more light that can reflect, the more interest the piece has. So this peening of the surface will give more light reflection which makes the piece more interesting. And the reason for using the several layers of sweatshirt in this particular case is number one, it's just a bit quieter. And also the small anvil is not going to move around on the table. As you can see, particularly on the piece on the left, there's some oxidization which I will take out with the wire brush later. But right now I'm annealing. Annealing is heating the metal up to what is red hot and then letting it cool. It'll be much softer and easier to work with. In other videos, you've seen this piece of pine wood where I have used red hot rods to force down into the pine and I use this for forming. I wanted a deeper trough, so I heated this half inch rod up until it was red hot. Just let it burn right down through this piece of pine wood. And now to center the blank, over that groove using the half inch rod and the dead blow hammer. What's happening here is that using that groove, I am able to take that flat piece of metal and give it form, which makes it more interesting. Here I'm using one of the blanks that I annealed using a square piece of steel. It's a quarter inch square scribing on each side of it and I'll scribe all the way to the bottom of the blank. I'm set up here with several layers of sweatshirt, mason's chisel, and the dead blow hammer. Placing the mason's chisel right on the scribed lines. 
And the reason for using several layers of sweatshirt is so that the chisel, when it goes into the metal, the metal has some place to go. As opposed to just doing it on a flat surface like the welding table. And this is very stiff now. And before I can go any further, I'll need to anneal this blank and straighten it out. A few minutes ago, I formed this piece. And now I can use the same idea, which is just a variation on a theme. This is a blank that has been peened with the small ball peen hammer and annealed. Now I can center it in the groove using the half inch rod, dead blow hammer, and form this. Since it has been peened with the ball peen hammer, it will have a different appearance. Just to prove a point that you don't always need new fresh metal. In doing some remodeling, I tore off this 50 year old galvanized flashing. Cut out these blanks and use the same steps that I've used in this video just to see what I could do with this old galvanized flashing. I don't like to work with galvanized metal and the torch, but here I'm not doing any torch work at all. Using the small ball peen hammer, peening this piece. Once this piece is cleaned up, and burnished on the wire brush, it will look good on any tree. Just a few pieces of material, a little bit of time, I ended up with these five Christmas ornaments. 